What's up, guys? Carolina Jackpot coming at you. It's January 1st, 2019. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, thanks for joining up. Uh, there's been some good college football games on today. If you hadn't been able to watch them, man, I'm sorry for that. There have been some really good ones that uh, uh, went just the way I expected them to so far. Made five picks and predictions. If you want to go back and watch that video, it's the last one up. Picked Iowa to cover the spread in the Outback Bowl. Did it. LSU covered the spread in the Fiesta Bowl. Did it. Kentucky covered the spread in the Citrus Bowl. Did it. Uh, I am also on my way to covering here with Ohio State and Washington. If Ohio State can uh, get their defense together one more time, let's run the clock out. 642 left. Washington just scored again. So it's going to be 28-17 after the impending extra point. They're six-and-a-half point favorites. I picked them to cover, so we'll see. If they take care of business and so does Georgia, I'll be a perfect 5-0 and on the day. Uh, anyway, guys, getting on to business at hand. <clears throat> you know, if you've watched my videos over the past couple of years, you will uh, see almost every video that I sign off with, I will say, go Gamecocks, go Coach Boom. Okay, well, I have been um, a big Coach Boom supporter over the past three years. And this year, I have put myself in the position of being a big Coach Boom apologist. Now, if you'll remember, after the Texas A&M game that South Carolina lost about midway through the season, I was pretty upset, and um, I was basically calling for him to be gone that day. Um, I kind of regressed a little bit and uh, thought better of it and decided, eh, you know, you need to settle down and give this guy a chance. Well, I'm here to tell you, I've made up my mind, I've done a lot of soul searching, and I am officially done giving this guy chances. I'm done with him. I am absolutely 110% done. You're not changing my mind. Um, <laughs> you know, just looking back, looking back at Saturday, the Belt Bowl, 28 nothing. 28 nothing. How do you find a silver lining in that cloud? You lost 28 nothing. You didn't lose 28 nothing to the defending national champions. You lost 28 nothing to Virginia, an up and coming team, taking nothing away from them. In the ACC Coastal, that does not recruit at the same level as you, does not take the same interest in football as you, doesn't have the high-profile coach that you do. Ah, but I digress. They went out there and absolutely wore our tails for a hat on Saturday in our home away from home, Bank of America Stadium. 28 nothing, Embarrassing and sad. And everybody wants to talk about, well, you know, their defensive back feels pretty good. You know, they got a couple of – I listened to part of that game and watched part of it. I, I mean, I was in and out on Saturday. I was not able to devote all my time to it. But, you know, it was just sitting listening to our radio announcers, Todd Ellis and Tommy Suggs, talking about some – well, I'm telling you, Clemson's the number one defense we faced this year with Georgia, a close second. But – Tommy, this Virginia team is really bringing it. This defense is really solid. They have about three NFL players back there in the backfield on defense. And then Todd, Tommy says, they really do, Todd. And, you know, they're just shutting down everything that Jake Bentley and the receivers are trying. They cannot get free to make a play. Really? No. I don't want to hear another. That loss right there was – on coaching, coaching, 150% on coaching. You were not ready to play the game. You weren't ready to play the game. You, your coach gets you ready to play the game. Your coach has got to get you motivated to play the game. I don't understand what is going on. There's some kind of disconnect somewhere in between the message that he's uh, wanting to send and what he's actually sending and what these guys are actually hearing and then what they're going out there and translating it to on the football field. I mean, it's just there is a huge drop-off. How do you go from 
get annihilated by Georgia. Then you come back a few weeks later, you play a tough Vanderbilt team on the road and just absolutely annihilate them. Then you come back another week later and you almost lose to a sorry Tennessee team. You lose to Kentucky in a game that you don't even show up for. And then you go out, you beat Missouri, a bowl team. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. There's something that is just not right. And people will tell me, well, you got to give Coach Boom a chance. You got to give him a chance. You know, he was left in a mess. Was he? I mean, look at his recruiting classes. They're 20th, 18th, 24th, something right there. Coach Spurrier's recruiting classes of the last few years, 20th, 21st, 24th. I mean, it's the same thing. That's the same thing. You're not developing these guys. Somebody's not developing these kids. They're not uh, – taking enough time with them to develop them. There's the injuries thing that I keep talking about, the injuries thing. Man, we have so – no college football team has been as injured as we are this year. That's a problem. And I think the problem is there's a failure to rotate these guys in and out in an effective way during the game, giving the second and third teamers just a few key reps when they can spell the first teamers and then putting the first teamers back out there on the field when it matters the most. Henceforth, you're leaving the first-teamers out there the whole time, and you're only putting those second- and third-teamers in there when the games are well in hand. And if you'll see any of our games this year, you'll see that maybe we didn't have a lot of them well in hand. So you're running these guys into the ground. They're getting injured. They're hurt. They don't want to play. I mean, it's just, it's just a dumpster fire that is right now it's, it's, it's smoldering. It's starting to take a little bit of illumination. But before long, it's going to be full bore. It was pretty much full bore, in my opinion, after you lose to Virginia 28 nothing. I mean, that's awful, it's pathetic, and it's sad. Then I want to get back to talk about uh, the thing about players sitting out these final games of their college uh, careers to protect their stock for the NFL draft. You know, I understand that. You know, Debo Samuel, South Carolina wide receiver slash running back slash sometimes quarterback slash slot back slash I do everything. He did everything for South Carolina. Great player, man. Great kid. He scored a lot of touchdowns when he's been healthy. He has been a hell of a force for us to be reckoned with on the offensive side of the ball. They have to account for him. They have to account for him. Okay, that being said, he made the decision just a couple of days after it was announced he was not going to play. He was going to protect his stock for the NFL draft. All right, looking at this. Debo Samuel's a member of that team, right? He sees the depth chart, right? He knows the guys. He knows who's hurt, right? He knows who ain't hurt. He knows there were tons and tons and tons of injuries on the defensive side of the ball. He knows that he could have made a difference in that game. He should have played in it. And if nothing else... I put this on a Facebook group post today. They were talking about it, banning it back and forth. You know, this kid, in my opinion, if all was well with the team, if everybody was healthy, for the most part, if we were favored, it looked like we were going to win, if they had things in hand, or, you know, it was a blowout. He could have went to the coach beforehand, Coach Boone, Coach Brian McClendon, and said, hey, yo, look, you know, if we got it in hand and everything's good, why don't y'all try to limit my reps, okay? Limit my touches so that I don't go out there and get my legs messed up again. You know, what would have been wrong with that? Then it's out of the public eye. Nobody knows about it. Nobody talks about it. Nobody makes a big deal about it. That's the bad thing about stuff today and the bad thing about social media. As far as that makes it, everybody knows something. And a lot of these people have no knowledge of football. They have no knowledge of the game, but... They know a little bit of something because it's out there on social media. That way, it's kept hush-hush. It's kept under the rug. When he saw what shape that team was in, he should have made the decision to play, sir. You made the wrong decision. And nobody's going to make me waver from that. Nobody is going to make me change my mind, period, whatsoever. There are a lot of people out there who agree with me that are, you know, in my age group, Uncle Lou, famous YouTuber, he feels the same way. You quit on the team. I mean, you quit on them. There was a Virginia fan that actually commented on one of my videos the other day, a UVA fan, not a subscriber, but he made a comment. Maybe he is a subscriber now. I don't know. 
sometimes when you see Carolina Jackpots videos, you just got to hit the sub button, which I wish, by the way, a lot of you do because we're almost at 3,000 subs right now. He made the comment that um, <sighs> I just hit a blank. I hit an absolute blank. UVA fan. What did he say? Oh, yeah. He said this guy has a commitment to the university that gave him a scholarship. He doesn't have a commitment to the NFL right now. Very simple, but very smart point. But then we have other YouTubers on here. We have a Clemson fan, Mr. Uh, Clemson Natty Champs Hold That L Bama, I believe is his name. Uh, he's a, a younger guy, uh, 21 years old, so he says. So, you know, from that younger generation, he says, there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with protecting your draft stock. Then he writes me a big old huge long paragraph, and he talks about, you know, uh, some guy that played for the Cowboys who got his knee blowed out in the end of a bowl game. Which, well, you know what? That's unfortunate for that guy. That is an unfortunate circumstance, and it sucks. But guess what? That's like a what a one in a hundred shot that that happens. I mean, it's bad. It's unfortunate. It could have happened in any game. And then he also goes on to talk about how uh, you know these these yeah he's got a scholarship, but these educations are meaningless. Something about how Arian Foster on his podcast talked about how he wanted to study uh, astrophysicists or astro science at the University of Tennessee, and the coaching staff wouldn't let him because they say it was too hard and it wouldn't interfere with it, it would interfere with his football play. But baloney, okay? They let them bury bodies under the football stadium up here at Tennessee. You really think that they're going to discourage a player from taking whatever courses he wants to or majoring in whatever he wants to. Bull crap, dude. Get that mess on out of here. All right, get on out of here with that mess. If you, you know who Bobby Bowden is. Everybody knows who Bobby Bowden is. There was a player uh, that played for Bobby and graduated about 10 years ago named, uh, my, uh, gosh, what was his name? It, it escapes me right now. Myron Roll. Myron Roll was a Rhodes Scholar. A Rhodes Scholar, Okay. Bobby didn't discourage him from going out and pursuing his Rhodes scholar ship, did he? Yeah, so I don't believe any of that stuff right there. Uh, but a, a change does need to be made, uh, in my opinion, at the University of South Carolina. Miami had enough guts to do it late, late after the bowl game. They forced Mark Rick to go in there and quit his job. Exactly what they did. Now, I don't agree with who they hired for head coach. This guy, Manny Diaz, I mean, he's, he's never coached anywhere. He's never been a head coach. They want to start winning. They want to win now. That's their philosophy. They want to get back to where they were. Can this guy do it for them? I don't know. I don't know. He has no head coaching experience when you're in that boat. I think I would like to hire someone with head coaching experience. I'd like to see South Carolina go after a Matt Campbell, a Dino Babers, um, a uh, – Luke Fickle uh, at Cincinnati. I like to see after uh, a guy that the the coach at Minnesota. Um, what's his name? PJ Fleck. These are guys that are in their their Power Five programs. Well, except for Luke Fickle, but they're not like they're not SEC programs. They're kind of off the beaten path, Big Ten type programs, Big Twelve type programs. These guys could really make a name for themselves if they got into an SEC program like the University of South Carolina, turned it around on a young guy. A young guy under 40 years old. Let's get some new blood in there. And like I said, I like Coach Boom. He's a good guy. He's he's a guy that he's he's like the common man. You know what I'm saying? He's Yep. I like to watch professional wrestling, like especially old professional wrestling. I remember Dusty Rhodes used to always call himself the common man, baby. I'm the common man. Well, Dusty Rhodes really wasn't quite such a common man. I mean, there wasn't a lot of, of, of white dudes with bleach blonde hair out there uh, who talked like a black man, who uh, you know hung out with people of all races, creeds, and colors. Not that there was anything wrong with that. He was a trendsetter, and he was a great individual and a great entertainer. But when I think about Someone who was a common guy that was a pro wrestler. I think of Arn Anderson, Minnesota Wrecking Crew. 
former partner of Ole Anderson, former Four, four Horseman member. Well, I guess he's still in the Four Horsemen. You're a horseman, you're a horseman for life. Um, but Arn, you know, he would, you know, go into interviews and talk about, because when you're a horseman, it's not something you put on in the morning and take off at night. It's a state of mind. It's a state of being. It's a lifestyle. It's something that you commit yourself to be the very best in the sport of professional wrestling. That's who Coach Boom reminds me of. Just a common, everyday guy, not the best body in the world, not the best talker in the world, not the best athlete in the world, but he got the job done. But it just hasn't happened for him. It just hasn't. Dude, if you can't win this year, you need to go. Because obviously, they're going to keep you around this year. They're going to keep you around. Ray Tanner doesn't have the foresight. I don't think he has the guts to get rid of you and cut you loose right now. There's a lot of fans that are angry. There's a hungry fan base, and a fan base that, quite frankly, deserves a lot better than what we're getting right now than the product we're getting right now. We deserve a lot better than unprepared players, lies, press conferences, apologizing to the fans, apologizing to the students, apologizing to the uh, sponsors and donors and everything else. Dude, just win some football games. Just won some football games. And you won't need to make those press conferences. You know, early on uh, in the summer, well, not early in the summer, late in the summer, really right before the season started, I kind of questioned him when I had to defend him. When he made that stupid comment about the daggum uh, DJ Durkin thing, talking about, uh, well, you know, there's no credibility in, in whatever it was, uh, unreliable sources and are un or anonymous sources, what he said. And I know DJ, dude, why would you defend that? Right now, this guy is in the middle of a huge deal. Well, there, a young man has passed away. A young man passed away on the college football field. And you're sitting here passing judgment on it and trying to defend him? Why? Just say no comment. Say, I really don't. I haven't followed the situation because I've been getting my team prepared right now. But I'll look into it later and maybe let you know. Uh, you know, and sweep it under the rug. Why would you make that comment when he did that? That made me wonder, is this the smartest person in the world we're dealing with right here? No, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I really don't. At any rate, go Gamecocks. 2019 is going to be a good year. We've got some good players coming in. Zacchaeus Pickens, number one player in the state of South Carolina, is coming in. We got several other athletes in the state of South Carolina coming in um, to uh, play various positions on the team. And of course, Ryan Helensky, the high five star or high four star from uh, California, coming in to play at quarterback. Should give Jake Milton some competition. Should give him some competition. Will he get it? I don't know. Jake Milton should have been yanked the other day. When he went over for the first two series against Virginia, I should have brought Michael Skarnecki in there to play in that game. It was his fifth-year senior. It's his last game, and he's going to play. Guess what? He didn't quit on his team. He was there. Guess what? He didn't play. You know why Coach Boom says they don't play him? Why well, I say they don't play him when Jake starts screwing up? Because we have a package for Jake. Okay, We have a package for him, and, and the, that's just not designed for Michael right Really? The guy's been with your program since the year 2014. He's been there since the year before Steve Spurrier decided to quit. You think by now he's not smart enough to read a defense? I, I think he probably is. Anyway, guys, I'm out. Go Gamecocks. Let's win 2019. It's our year. Be there or be square. Watch the rest of these college football games. Hopefully Ohio State hold Washington out of the end zone. No, no, they're not going to do it. They're going to let Washington score and cover the spread in this game, and I'm going to look like a fool. But anyway, that's all right. It's football, ain't it? All right, guys, I'll see y'all later. Appreciate it. Peace. I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks.